you start? We can start. Yes, sir. We have not read it, so one of you has to read it. So if Archana has got the text, you can read it then. Soon yes, can. Sir, I can read. Go ahead. The individual animal being in its first conscious self-affirmation has to rely on two sources of knowledge. As it is nascent and helpless, a small modicum of ununiform surface uh, consciousness in a world unknown to it, the secret conscious force sends up to this surface a minimum of intuition necessary for it to maintain its existence and go through the operations indispensable to life and survival. This intuition is not possessed by the animal, but possesses and moves it. It is something that manifests of itself in the grain of the vital and physical substance of consciousness under pressure of a need and for the needed occasion. But at the same time, a surface result of this intuition accumulates and takes the form of an automatic instinct, which works whenever the occasion for it recurs. The instinct belongs to the race and is imparted at birth to its individual members. The intuition, when it occurs or recurs, is unerring. The instinct is automatically correct as a rule, but can err, for it fails or blunders when the surface consciousness or an ill-developed Ill intelligence interferes, or if the instinct continues to act mechanically when, owing to change circumstances, the need or the necessary circumstances are no longer there. The second source of knowledge is surface contact with the world outside the natural individual being. It is this contact which is the cause first of a conscious sensation and sense perception and then of intelligence and then of intelligence. If there were not an underlying consciousness, the contact would not create any perception or reaction. It is because the contact stimulates into a feeling and a surface response, the subliminal of a being already vitalized by the subconscious life principle and its first needs and seekings that the surface awareness begins to form and develop. Intrinsically, the emergence of a surface consciousness by force of life contacts is due to the fact that in both subject and object of the contact, consciousness force is already existent in a subliminal latency. When the life principle is ready, sufficiently sensitive in the subject, the recipient of the contact, this subliminal consciousness emerges in a response to the stimulus, which begins to constitute a vital or life mind, the mind of the animal, and then, in the course of the evolution, a thinking intelligence. The secret consciousness is rendered into surface sensation and perception. The secret force into surface impulse. It seems you are reading science rather than yoga or philosophy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. For him, there is no difference between the two. He is seeing the reality, same you and then <laughs> telling you what it is. Yes, Rakata. He, he proves that there is no difference, actually, if you really go to the last. Yeah. yeah. Because if you have to understand the principle of things, naturally yoga helps in understanding the principle of things. Okay, so very interesting paragraph that he has said. So we will see what he said. In the previous paragraph, he has told us that the <laughs> in the animal, the source of his knowledge comes from two sources. One is from the physical world and one is from the inside, because the divine presence is there in everybody. So these are the two sources. So in the animal, he is discussing the animal. Okay, so let's have a look at each sentence. But I can do one thing, okay? I can quickly do the summary, because it is so logical and so step by step, that it's very, very helpful. 24 hours earlier we read this, but we have forgotten most of it, okay? So, to refresh our memory, I'll read the summary of the previous paragraph. Then we get the sense of continuity. Now, <clears throat> this is a text of the summary which I'm reading, okay? So, 
when first life emerges from matter, it is nothing short of a sheer miracle. How does dead matter become alive? The life form grows, becomes gradually more complex, learns. Okay, just one second. Yeah, the, um, the, the life form grows, becomes gradually more complex, learns, acquires knowledge. From where does the knowledge and consciousness come from? From matter, but it is dead, a blank of inconscience. So the power of learning, knowing, could be an inherited power of, from below in matter. Okay. Note the language. He is just making surmises. He is just giving you possibilities. Could it be coming from there? Is it inherent in uh, matter? It seems to be an ignorance which has the power to learn and to know because matter is ignorance. But the power to know is there inherent in it. That's what one possibility. Or it might be another possibility. Or it might be held that what we call consciousness is nothing but an inconscience mechanically recording sense data and as mechanically dictating a response. Okay. Now, this, if you think of a tape recorder or a camera, that's exactly what's happening. Itself it is unconscious, but it is capable of recording okay, and playing back. Okay? So this is what he's saying. Is the same mechanicalness may be there in a human being also or an animal. Okay? It might be held that what we call consciousness is nothing really but an inconscious mechanically recording sense data and as mechanically dictating a response. But this scientific view is not satisfactory because many things are not explained. For instance, how can a mechanical record suddenly turn into a conscious response and the sense of an egoistic self? I am doing the act. Okay, You feel like that. So it, this sense of egoistic self is there. So that cannot come from a tape recorder or a camera. It cannot. Okay? So in any case, the mechanical theory cannot explain many things. Some of them are, for instance, ideation. From where do ideas come? In a camera or a recording uh, device, ideas cannot come. They just mechanical do it. What about imagination? What about free play of intellect? All these things mechanical theory cannot explain. Okay? So this emergent consciousness cannot be satisfactorily accounted for unless we accept the concept of involution. Okay? Nothing can come out of nothing. This is a theory. And so if it's already there in matter, then it can come. So that's the one explanation, most logical explanation. A careful observation of animal life, their instincts imposes on us a necessity of an involved underlying knowledge and consciousness in the inconscience itself. Because if you examine the instinct in birds and instinct in animals, they know exactly what to do. So it is coming from where? It cannot come from. So it is involved already in matter. That's the conclusion. It is this involved consciousness that springs up out of inconscience of matter. Okay, so this is what you said in the previous paragraph. Now we start reading what we read today. The individual animal, in other words, that there, there are two sources of knowledge. One is from within itself, but that knowledge is seeming to be an ignorance, but it is really knowledge is slowly awakening. Okay. So, and the other is the source in the physical world itself. The physical world you are seeing with your senses and it is giving you certain knowledge. It may be a defective knowledge, but it is knowledge nevertheless. The, I'm reading the sentences now. The individual animal, animal being, in its first conscious self-affirmation has to rely on two sources of knowledge. Very clear. Okay. What are the two sources? He will tell you one by one. As it is nescient and helpless, a small modicum of uninformed surface consciousness in a world unknown to it, the secret consciousness sends up to the surface, the minimum of intuition 
necessary for it to maintain its existence and go through the operations indispensable to life and survival. So, I'm reading this again very carefully. Okay, as it is nascent and helpless. Okay, the two sources, the small modicum of uninformed surface consciousness in a world unknown to it. This is the first source of knowledge. Okay, the physical world giving you a modicum of uninformed, uh, uninformed surface consciousness. Okay. Second is the secret consciousness force sends up to the surface the minimum of intuition necessary for it to maintain its existence and go through the operations indispensable to life and survival. The operations indispensable to life and survival are eating, sleeping, and reproduction. Okay. So it does all this mechanically. Okay. This intuition is not possessed by the animal, but possesses and moves it. Okay. The intuition tells the animal what to do. The animal has not got any control over this intuition. The intuition that he's talking about in the animal is the instinct. The flight of birds away to when winter comes to 10,000 miles, not 10,000, <laughs> five, 6,000 miles down south they go. That is one thing. Then there are so many other um, interesting uh, examples of instinct. Okay, so go through the operations indispensable to life and so on. One of the most interesting uh, instincts in newborn animals, they start suckling. Okay, They know exactly where to go and start suckling the, uh, the mother. So this is something fantastic. How do they know that? <laughs> you really think of it, it is surprising. Okay, so, <clears throat> so <clears throat> this is the, uh, so that's what he's saying. Then we come to the next sentence. Okay, so <clears throat> this intuition is not possessed by the animal, but possesses and moves it. The instinct tells it what to do and what not to do. The instinct is in possession of the animal. It is something that manifests of itself in the grain of the vital and physical substance of consciousness under pressure of a need and for the needed occasion. This is the into instinct in animals. The instinct in animals is the involved knowledge in matter coming out in life and telling blindly what to do. We are just following blindly the instructions coming from Life itself, this I have to do. Without consciousness, it does it. Need of a needed occasion. But at the same time, okay, the, the, the under the, he's using very interesting words. Okay, under pressure of a need. So pressure of a need, you would think immediately of hunger and sleep. Okay. The pressure of a hunger is such that it will automatically go to eat. Okay. It's something natural that happens. Or the pressure of a need is again sleep. When you get very tired, there's a pressure and you fall asleep. Okay. Or for the needed occasion. The needed occasion is um, looking for um, building a nest in birds. Okay. The needed occasion, I'm going to, the bird is going to lay eggs, so it has to build a nest. So that's a needed occasion. Okay. So See how accurate these words are. Huh? It's very interesting. Huh? You have to pressure of a need. Okay? Then needed occasion. Different. Altogether different. But at the same time, a surface result of this intuition accumulates and takes the form of an automatic instinct which works whenever the occasion for it recurs. Okay? Whenever the occasion for it recurs. So it learns. That this has to be done. <clears throat> For instance, when it gets its young, okay, it gives birth to a young. Next time, it is easier for it because it has learned something. This instinct belongs to the race, okay, and it imparted at birth to its individual members. Okay. It is something that comes from life in the animal. The intuition, when it occurs or recurs, is unerring. Now, note the word, Shrimla is using the word intuition, okay? And he says very clearly that in the animal, the intuition is received very well in the form of an instinct. In the human being, 
because he develops a rationality, the intuition doesn't work very well in the human beings, unless he goes to a higher level. It works much better, the intuitive plane coming down into life, it works much better in an animal than in man. Okay? So, and even when it comes into man, the mental substance intervenes and then there is a problem. This is very similar to the phenomena of the stars, which you don't see in the daylight. Okay? The stars are there, but you don't see them because the light of the day is hiding the stars. Okay? So when you reduce the light of the day and it becomes night, then you see the stars. So in the animal, the waking consciousness is very dim, just like daylight is not there. So the intuition works very well. The, the stars, the intuition of stars is very visible in the animal and it follows it. But in human beings, the rationality is so strong like daylight that you don't see the intuition, which is the stars. <laughs> it's an image I'm giving you, but it's very interesting how it happens. Okay, so. <clears throat> the intuition, when it occurs, occurs or recurs, is unerring. Okay. Now, it's very interesting okay, what he's saying. The instinct is automatically correct as a rule, but can err, for it fails or blunders when the surface consciousness or an indeveloped intelligence interferes or if the instinct continues to act mechanically when, owing to change circumstances, the need or the necessary circumstances are no longer there. Okay, It's a very interesting thing and I have noticed twice this phenomena that he is talking about. Okay, I'll tell you. <coughs> uh, there is a tree and I used to go there to uh, the art house, if you know, where that massage clinic is there. Okay, there's a big tree, mango tree. And I used to go to collect my eggs there. And one day I saw that in a particular place, all sorts of twigs, longish twigs, okay? Long twigs are all lying on the ground. I said, how can this be? They are sweeping the floor every day. How can it be that these twigs are there? Then suddenly it uh, seemed that, why don't you look up? So I looked up and saw that there are crows trying to build a nest, okay? But their nest, when they are building, they have to take the right size of the twig. If they take too big, obviously they can't build it. And the twigs are falling down. You have to take a small twig and mold it and weld it, stitch it into a nest. But then I am unable to do that. Okay? So it was so interesting. So that is what you say. It, it, it can hurt. Okay? The instinct in animals very often works very well. Okay? Is unerring. The instinct is automatically correct as a rule, but can err, for it fails or blunders when the surface consciousness or an ill-developed intelligence interferes, or if the instinct continues to act mechanically, when, owing to change circumstances, the change circumstances is we are not getting the small twigs anymore. Okay? So, see, it becomes a circumstances are changed. The need or the necessary circumstances are no longer there. Then they make a mistake. Okay. How accurate Scribble's language is. When we give examples to ourselves, we can see. It's fantastic. <clears throat> the second source of knowledge is surface contact. Now, the first source is your own inner being, inherent knowledge in matter and coming out in life. That's the instinct in animals. Okay. The second source of knowledge is surface contact with the world, what you get through the senses, sense knowledge. Okay, The second source of knowledge is surface contact with the world outside. Surface contact, it means the senses, okay. nothing else. The surface contact through senses with the world outside and the natural individual being. Okay, what is meaning by natural individual being? He means the individual being's nature. And that means your body, mind, life. Okay? You have to understand that in this way. Natural individual being, the individual being's nature. Okay? And the nature is what? Your body, mind, life. It is coming in contact with the world. That's a source of knowledge. It is this contact which is a cause, first of a conscious sensation 
and sense perception and then of intelligence okay so again let's understand what he is saying it is this contact okay i come in contact with a let's say a plant okay then there is a conscious sensation okay it gives me a sensation and a sense perception then i start thinking of the flower from where it has come this and the intelligence comes in so first it is based on senses then the intelligence comes in this is precisely the phenomena of science science is using senses to get knowledge and then it starts thinking okay the sun is rising every day is it rising at the same time it sees the sun rising sense perception okay it gives you as as conscious sensation then you start thinking is it coming every day the intelligence is coming in so this is exactly the process of science okay first gather sense data and then start working with your intelligence on them to understand the nature and rules and laws of things if there were not an underlying consciousness the contact would not create any perception or reaction so there has to be a an inner knowledge which is there and that is what starts giving you the reaction it is because the contact stimulates into a feeling and a surface response the subliminal of being already vitalized by the subconscious life principle its and its first needs and seekings that is surface awareness begins to form and develop now that's a pretty complex sentence let's see what he's saying okay so he's saying if there were not an underlying consciousness so no uh, it's only matter huh? without any uh, inherent uh, knowledge in it it is not consciousness is not there if that happens what happens the contact would not create any perception or reaction obviously again we come back to the idea of the tape recorder or the camera it is able to receive but it's not able to give a reaction if the consciousness is not there and there is no consciousness in a camera therefore it doesn't give a reaction nor is it in a tape recorder okay so it's only recording but it cannot it can receive but it can't give a reaction it is because the contact stimulates into a feeling and a surface response the subliminal of being already vitalized by the subconscious life principle and its first needs and seekings that a surface awareness begins to form and develop the surface awareness is the development of the intuitive instinctive knowledge already there in in the lower plane okay so when life comes in this intuition starts slowly becoming aware and helps life to get the knowledge which is already there in a inherent manner within itself that's what he said intrinsically the emergence of a surface consciousness by force of life life contacts is due to the fact that in both subject and object of the contact consciousness force so yeah, i have to read it correctly okay just one second intrinsically the emergence of a surface consciousness by force of life contacts is due to the fact that in both subject and object of the contact consciousness force is already existing in a subliminal latency now we come back to the principle of consciousness being everywhere so there is consciousness in a in the object and there is consciousness within you so when the consciousness of the object comes into consciousness of the subject then there is a certain awakening that's exactly what he's saying there is a spark and you get the knowledge comes from there so <clears throat> in both subject and object of the contact consciousness force is already existing in a subliminal latency okay the <clears throat> knowledge is there everywhere consciousness is there everywhere when the life principle is ready sufficiently sensitive in the subject the recipient of the contact this subliminal consciousness emerges in a response to the stimulus which begins to constitute a vital or life mind mind of the animal and then in the course of the evolution a thinking intelligence i don't uh, if you remember 
the, he has already discussed this very great detail, so I'll go back, to, I'll hark back to that thing. You, you remember he said that there is four types of knowledge. Okay. So, indirect separative knowledge. Here he is talking about the direct separative knowledge. Okay. So, I'll uh, remind you, I'll give you all the four, then you'll see how he is, what he is talking about here. Consciousness is there everywhere, okay? It is there in the plant, it is there in the animal, it is there in a stone, and there is consciousness also in the individual. It can be an animal, it can be a human being, it can be anything. So, consciousness is there everywhere. So, the first type of consciousness uh, knowledge is through indirect separated knowledge, that is through the senses. Okay? It is indirect because you are using senses. The second is direct, he calls it subliminal. Okay? It is direct. I am not using my senses at all. I am using my uh, subtle senses. Okay, I am going and the, the uh, <clears throat> I come to know things directly. If I see somebody, I know his thoughts. Okay, So this is the, the knowledge that is there in the object and the knowledge that is there inside the subject comes together and sparks a, a knowledge. That's the second level. This is what he is describing here in this paragraph that we read just now. Then the third level of consciousness is direct identity. <laughs> direct non-separated. The second one that we are describing here is direct but separated. Okay? The object remains object and the subject remains the subject but knowledge is engendered. Okay? Knowledge is created by the contact between subject and object. But the last one the highest is identity. There is no separation and it is direct. Okay. So now he is talking of the second one here. Okay, so let's read that again carefully, and then you'll see that exactly that he is referring. He has discussed elsewhere. Here he is repeating. Okay. Intrinsically, the emergence of a surface consciousness by force of life contact. Okay, force of life contacts. In life, we are coming into contact with everything outside ourselves. So, it is due to the fact that in both subject and object of the contact consciousness. Okay. Oh, no, I have to read it correctly. <laughs> I read it again wrong. Intrinsically, the emergence of a surface consciousness by force of life contacts is due to the fact that in both subject and object of the contact consciousness, in both subject and object of the contact consciousness, force, consciousness force is already existing in a subliminal latency. The, it is already there in me in a latent form. When the life principle is ready, okay, lies in the animal, sufficiently sensitive in the subject, okay, in the subject, the animal itself, the recipient of the contact, we, who is this animal, okay, this subliminal consciousness emerges in a response to the stimulus which begins to constitute a vital or life mind, the mind of the animal, and then in the course of the evolution, a thinking intelligence. So, this is exactly what he is saying, that this, because there is already a knowledge in the substance, okay, it could be in matter, it develops in life and becomes even more developed in the in man, okay. In the animal, it is instinct and in human beings, it becomes rationality, thinking, intelligence, because it is already there inside, okay. So, <clears throat> the secret consciousness is rendered into surface sensation and perception. The secret force into surface impulse. So, this is because it is already there inside, okay, in the matter, that these things come up one by one. So, now, 8.31, we have got nine minutes to summarize the thing because it's very interesting what he's saying. I read the summary of what he said in this one, okay. Just one second. So, it will be very interesting if you note carefully what he's saying. The animal individual is the first living creature 
to have a conscious self affirmation naturally the annual individual is the first one there is no there is no conscious self affirmation in in matter there isn't okay the atom is not conscious self affirmation what is meant by self affirmation you become aware of your own individual existence that's what it means okay it has to rely on two sources for its knowledge to deal effectively with a hostile world everything in the physical world is hostile to it so it has to develop the capacities to deal with all these things okay and live effectively in the world number 1 there is a minimum surface semi conscious awareness of the world which is unknown to it okay take the animal so you can see it is unknown to it and it is trying to develop and live effectively totally unknown at the beginning okay that's how it is and slowly it becomes no it gets more and more the world becomes known to it second force there is a fundamental underlying consciousness force as a base in the inconscience of matter involution it is already there which sends up to the surface some vague indications of how to deal with the problem at hand okay so that is how the animal manages to do automatically what needs to be done this indication is what we call instinct in animals largely it works flawlessly even if mechanically unless there is an interference on the surface ignorance which knows not what to do in a given situation this in so the knowledge which is coming from matter is being interfered with by the knowledge which is coming from the world that's what we say then it, the mistakes are possible this instinct actually drives and guides the animal behavior which is like an obedient machine performing mechanically the dictates of the instinct okay now this is the this also science has discovered it's called behaviorism okay so they pavlov was the first one to discover that that the animal gives us a response that depending on the conditions it leads and depends on the condition his experiment was very interesting that's why i'm repeating this here he used to give food to a dog and he used to ring a bell okay so whenever he used to ring the bell the dog knows it is time for food and he used to start salivating saliva used to come into his mouth okay so one day what he did he rang the bell but didn't give the food even then the dog started sal salivating so this is exactly what is meant by mechanical reaction from the lower level okay so this is what simply is saying that the animal behavior is guided by the mechanical reactions coming from the knowledge which is already there inside it okay so this instinct actually drives and guides the animal behavior which is like an obedient machine performing mechanically the dictates of the instinct the animal does not possess the instinct the animal does not possess it it is the instinct that whirls the animal round and controls it okay. the first source of knowledge is the instinct the second source is the surface sense contact with the external world the first contact produces sensation and later intelligence okay how to deal with the sensation but it is a basic underlying knowledge referred to earlier that allows the mere sensation to become knowledge if this underlying knowledge were not pre present the sensation would not turn into knowledge because exactly we gave the example of the um, camera and a mechanical um, recording device okay auditory recording device so there is no reaction if this underlying knowledge were not there the sensation would not run into knowledge turn into knowledge then the repeated sensation and its reaction gets stored in the genes and is passed on to the next generation as a hereditary trait this is the mechanism how life appears out of matter and acquires knowledge 
this is possible because the involution of spirit in matter this then progresses to mind and mental knowledge here what shall we say very interesting para so we have got 3 minutes more if there are any questions you can uh, deal with them and next week we'll take up this again if this underlying subliminal consciousness so basically you can see now how important is the involution because of that everything is explainable otherwise it's impossible to explain anything so many things okay <clears throat> the more you think of it the more you will be surprised and because it's already there the possibility just see very simple thing how in if the conditions are right mat mud okay slime and mud is producing a lotus a rose absolutely impossible to understand how it is happening unless you think that is already the capacity all these capacities are there in matter the principle of involution science has discovered evolution but it is not discovered evolution at all it is so important <laughs> okay so um, rangada can i ask a question yeah. then rangada can i ask a question yes yes go ahead yeah uh, you mentioned the four types of knowledge and uh, uh, what is the difference between the third and the last one oh uh, yes, yes okay that, that is a very good question Uh, because I don't make a distinction between the two. Both are knowledge by identity, but the last one is perfect identity. Ah. Then the third one is an imperfect identity. So mm -hmm. if you want to make it absolutely categorical, the last one is God Himself. You become God because He Himself is everything. But a human being getting identity is a third one. <laughs> so uh -huh. <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you. That's the difference. Yeah, that's the difference. It's a question of grade. Mm -hmm. It's a question of grade. <laughs> okay. We stop here today. Okay. Au revoir, everybody. Thank you, Ranga. Bye, bye.